sessions number three, where the topic is creation and innovation. And the reason I started with this song called Fearless, it was my first song ever written. So I created a song. So it kind of fits with the theme today. So welcome. We're going to talk all about more creation today. Give you a little, um, gosh, tidbit on making the song. I got to give a good shout out to my friend and musician. Thistle, who said, Gina, you can write a song. We need to write a song. We need to write a song. I'm like, I can't write a song. I've never written a song. Uh, and then I did with his assistance, but a creation nonetheless. So as we get situated, I can take that. We want to welcome you here today and appreciate, as always, your support. My cameraman and colleague is getting settled, and we will be eating cheese and talking more shortly. Okay. Bobby G. That was it. How are you? Multi you multitasking. <laughs> multitasking. That was amazing. That was wonderful. Okay. I loved it. It's a little Disney-esque. That's what I keep thinking. That's okay. It's kind of basic, your song. It's your basic chords. It's your basic stuff. Uh -huh. But um, yeah, it was a creation that I'm quite proud of. I have to say, I woke up the next morning, cloud nine. Mm -hmm. Like, that feeling of having made something yeah. um, was indescribable and really, really exciting. Addicting? Addicting, yes. Mm -hmm. Now it's carving out the time. We'll mm -hmm. talk about it. It's just carving out the time to yeah. do more because I would love to yeah. do more. You got to schedule um, it. But I will. I need to schedule songwriting session number two. Fearless? <laughs> Fearless, yes. Fearless. And yeah, anyways, uh, that's it. So well, welcome everybody again. I'm Gina, uh, founder and cheese whiz at Benissimo. And I'm Robbie G, the professor of cheese. Yes. <laughs> and uh, here we are on a lovely Sunday, ready to talk more about creation, creative cheeses, yes. innovative cheeses, innovative techniques we'll talk about today too. We're going to talk about creativity, yeah. ingenuity, innovation, and all like things. Um, of course, how it relates to cheese and the cheeses that we, we are tasting. Yes. We're excited about this topic. Exactly. We were, we were already so kind of, we were already talking for like 15 minutes before and said, well, we better shut we up. Let's save it. Save it for the show. Um, <laughs> it's but, so true. It's and so true. Because we have a lot to say and we, and we, we encourage your questions, comments, please um, chat with us on YouTube. Yes. YouTube. If you have a YouTube account, you can do live chat. And this is how we kind of try to answer all your questions, uh, create a discussion. Uh, if you don't have a YouTube YouTube account you can still watch uh, just can't chat easy, yeah easy and we we want to um, introduce the cheeses I think first yes yeah, so that everybody can eat <laughs> yeah and we and go go ahead and, and dig in and um, uh, so we'll start with that just so we know what's what there are four cheeses and some accoutrements as always on the plates today yeah better show them really close yeah. this guy this triangle looking deal that is um, a little bit harder Formaggio. Is formaggio, meaning it's Italian <laughs> cheese, cheese from Italy. Um, that's called cu um, Cuor di Fieno. Fieno, yep. Cuor di Fieno, which means, we'll tell you what it means in a second. Good to know. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it means heart of hay. Heart of hay, yes. We'll tell, tell you why. And we'll tell you why. <laughs> but that is a good starter, I think, of the whole. You're gonna have a lot of crazy flavors today. These are very innovative, creative. It so. kind, you know, if so, I would. The only certainty is I would say to start with that one. The other three are kind of a free for all because they're really we get really funky and wild and crazy after that. Flavor wise, yeah. wise I think it'll be the mildest. Mm -hmm. um, this softy with the kind of orange or pinkish rind is called a red hawk. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I'll eat that piece. And juggling cheese will be on the next episode. <laughs> Slimy, sorry. Um, but that's California. the Red Hawk from yeah. California, from Cowgirl Creamery. Um, Red Hawk, because of the, the rind is supposed to be reddish, but it's more pinkish today. Mm -hmm. The uh, This guy right here that's kind of marbled and has got bits in it is the Four Alarm Cheddar. <laughs> yes. And that's got a bunch of peppers in it. Um, so that's the Four Alarm Cheddar. And then... This one is really crazy, and it's this really hard little rock-looking cheese. Yeah. And that's called Belper Canole, mm -hmm. or Belper Canole. No. Canole. Yeah. We're gonna say you, Belper Canole. You, yeah, it'll work. <laughs> it's got a coating of, uh, of pepper and salt on the rind, so yeah. um, should be able to identify yeah. that one. So we'll talk about each of the cheeses too, but we wanted you to say, since we're not pairing anything today, start nibbling, <laughs> start eating. Yeah. yeah. And just as we kind of talk in, we'll tell you about each one as we go. Dig in. Um, and then of course we have, uh, there's chocolate covered pretzels. We've got the little sweetie drop peppers again. And Gina, do you want to tell them about this spread that everyone has? Oh my God, the spread you guys. So again, back to our theme of creation and innovation. We have um, a monger 
uh, works at Mission Hill Shop. His name's Nate. Uh -huh. uh, he's also a trained chef. He spent a lot of time at Juniper and Ivy, other great restaurants. Yeah. And so he has a great sense of flavors and creative juices. Very creative. So. Who doesn't like pimento spread, right? Like, it's kind of coming back. I think yeah. it's kind of the rage. Uh -huh. But pimento spread has tons of mayo in it. And Nate thought, well, why don't we just make it more cheesy and create something that's more cheese-focused versus mayo-focused. So this is great Nate's <laughs> pimento spread. And uh, This is pimento yeah. spread 2020. 2020, yeah. This is exactly. <laughs> this is cool version uh -huh. pimento spread um so it's got three cheeses in it and i'm going to post the recipe um on our website after the class but three cheeses it's got cotswold which is cheddar with chives it's got a chev in it to give it some creaminess which is a goat cheese and then it has a cheddar in it uh rustic red uh -huh. sharp cheddar our prerequisite <laughs> sound effects for the day <laughs> um and blended together with cornichons mustard and i think that was it oh sriracha we got a uh, Baby sriracha Clydesdale. jam. It's sriracha, yeah, and it's from San Diego. Uh -huh. um, we blend all of that together and you get this version of pimento spread. I think it's delish. So definitely dig into that. And I can't forget about the apricot spread. Yeah. Another California yeah. treat from um, Central California, mm -hmm. Santa Cruz area. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So. Awesome, Rob. Are you going to start eating? Do we tell them a little bit cheese and the innovation yeah. of that too? And then we'll just talk about creativity in general. Yeah, let's. Well, let's talk about yeah. that first cheese that we had pointed out, and I, I bet most of you have already um, gotten through most of this <laughs> first wedge of cheese, <laughs> the Cord de Fiano, uh, and it means heart of hay, and uh, it's is it cow's milk or sheep's milk? Uh, it's cow. It is cow's milk, 100% cow's milk from Italy. And uh, what they what the cheesemaker does to be different for this one is they wrap and age it in hay. Yeah, um, like literally under uh, the picture that's um was on our YouTube, you know, for this video, yeah. literally just buried in the hay. In core means yeah. heart, heart, so I don't know if it's mm -hmm. in the shape of a heart or if it just is just the heart symbolic. Exactly, it creative. Mm -hmm. It's creative <laughs> because it's the heart underneath a pile of hay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But and innovative innovative uh -huh. and, and and so one of my one of the things i do as a setup when i when i teach classes about cheese and it's any class i think can benefit from a setup of kind of explaining at least putting in perspective why we have so many different cheeses and and how they can be so different how they can be so different yeah. so what what's the reason how do you have more than just your basic brie cheddar gouda um and and the reason goes beyond just the different milk types i mean you that's one reason goat, sheep, or cows, buffalo milk, all different, different breeds. Mm -hmm. Cheesemakers can get even more creative and they can mix and match the different milks and that's gonna give them a different finished product. They can age for different amounts of time, yeah. which is all gonna, gonna give you yeah. different cheeses. Um, and then after that, the cheesemaker can really get funky, creative. can really play around. Yeah. And a lot of times they will use what's local to them um, and they will, bring that into the to the make process and so yeah. you are there's nothing wrong with liking cheese that has herbs or spices or added, added flavors yes. we are all about taking that <laughs> snobbiness out of the cheese yes, experience exactly purists cool yeah Pure that's cheese, fine. awesome but these kind of flavored innovative crazy wacky ones yeah also fine They're so delicious. We yeah. love it when cheesemakers yeah. just get wild and crazy, yeah. like Steve Martin. Uh, <laughs> wild and crazy cheese. <laughs> with, uh, with the cheeses. And we, for that reason, um, I was telling someone today, I've been doing this for over a decade, and I never get, I never get bored. It never gets old because we see something new and different uh, mm -hmm. I, literally every week. And um, so we're going to have fun yeah. talking about those. But the innovation on the um, Cor de Fieno, and i got to give the Italians credit, Rob. I mean... For food, well, they rule in a number of things, yeah. right? But food, they are crazy good at. Mm -hmm. And the innovation of knowing that they could bury the piece of cheese yeah. and then it would absorb the flavors of whatever they buried it mm -hmm. in, right? Yeah. So hay, in this case, um, remember the... Uh, yeah, uh, uh, pecorino di fossa. The pecorino, okay, well, mm -hmm. yes, buried in... <laughs> it, mean, it means buried in pits. Okay, and I, buried in pits. This is the cheese, pecorino di fossa, buried in a dirt, like pit, mm -hmm. and that's where in the olden days <laughs> that the maggots would appear. I mean, seriously, this is a, a cheese that we don't get it that way when we get it, but it's still a funky, funky cheese. I wanted to put you that on You can add today. your own maggots to it. We couldn't get it. Yeah, I add that on separate. Um, but this one absorbs the flavors of the hay. Mm -hmm. Remember the one um, Speziato al Tartufo? Oh, yeah, they yeah, bury yeah. it in cinnamon, nutmeg, and cloves. Uh -huh. So it's got those spices on the outside, yeah. but of course, 
the interior kind of sucks in that flavor. So this one really sucks in. I think that hay and grass. The speziata um, they add truffle to, don't forget. Truffle too. There's another flavor they've added. Think of all the ones, Ubriacos, uh, washed uh, in wine. Yep. Of course. Washed in um, wine, soaked in wine, pressed with wine. Exactly. We've had Willoughby before, you know, some of yeah. them washed in beer. Mm -hmm. But all that washing, soaking, covering of cheeses is super innovative because then it takes something that, you know, might have just felt like a, a wheel, you know, just mm -hmm. a, a nice wedge of delicious cheese that adds a different dimension, just a flavor. And like in yeah. these cheese makers are they're they're a mix of, of, of artist, creator, as well as scientist, they're they're makers, they have they take so much pride in what they do and it is a total labor of love. Mm -hmm. And they're also really, really proud of where they come. And cheese is one of those products that is so region regional and so attached to the, the place mm -hmm. it comes from and the best way to to capture that or to explain that is to say you are what you eat and so a lot of these cheeses are they they literally taste like where they're from they yeah. taste like the vegetation from that place mm -hmm. because the animals pick it up in their diet and then it comes through in the milk and Covering the cheese. It in hay from the place <laughs> yes and so that's where i was going and, th yeah. and that concept is is referred to as terroir and you hear that a lot in wine tasting it refers to cheese as well but part of terroir is the stuff that they bring in and add to the cheeses so if a cheese is wrapped in bark you can rest assured that's a local a yeah. tree that grows locally exactly yeah. or if, it, if it's cool. dusted with ash mm -hmm. you can be sure that it's a it's a local Thing that they're burning to make that ash <laughs> um, and the hay is local the salt yeah. and the pepper are local the peppers um, yeah. uh, are who knows but yeah. uh, you know a lot of times they're local so our spread is kind of local because it's got the um, sriracha that's made locally here yeah yeah, yeah that's a good so point. that's kind of cool yeah it's our little version of terroir bringing in a little bite of san diego into the into the spread which george by the way loves it and um yes it's super flavorful all these cheeses have powerful flavors let's say the four alarm is named mm. that way for a reason <laughs> so be careful when you eat that one um i know we'll talk more about it but uh yeah it's very cool yeah i mean in the in the um the red hawk has a local story too which we'll we'll talk about uh yeah. in a minute but we should maybe talk a little bit more yeah. generally about creativity and some creativity of your for sure and really quick um question came up from jess mm -hmm. on pairing a wine or a beverage mm. with the corte fieno yeah i personally think um a crisp white like a, a pinot grigio mm -hmm. you know something bright like that and that's also from that region it comes from the veneto region northern italy near mm -hmm. venice um also pinot grigio comes from there so i think that would be really nice yeah. and bright with the um Cordofiano, something white like that. The Riesling we had a couple weeks ago yeah. would be spectacular as well. Yeah, whites are usually safer with with that type of cheese. Um, if you're looking for secondary stuff, if you're not a big white fan, um, Prosecco is also from, oh, yeah, from good that one. Yes. region. Mm -hmm. So that if you're if you have bubbles, um, Prosecco would be a good one for that. And I mean, if you are just a, one of those people who just goes right to the red and you stick with the red all night i always recommend for these italian aged cheeses kind of like a medium bodied they um like a table red uh fruity uh sangiovese um is the the grape that usually goes into chianti or it's like a blend of uh of, of kind of medium bodied red grapes those tend to do really well when we say table wine they're just versatile yeah, um, wines that are That's meant such, to be. They need a better paired. name for that because table wine is such. It's like almost derogatory to it the poor wine bad. because it's so good. <laughs> like you <laughs> just pour it on the table. Pour it on what, the table. I mean, <laughs> they, we say table cheese too. Yes, and, that's, and then. You know, I just think of that as, and we've, we've been lucky enough to be in some of these people's homes in Italy. They leave a bottle of wine on the table. They leave a chunk of, of cheese <laughs> table, on the table. Cheese, yeah. Every time you walk by it, you just either lop off or a, a chunk yeah. of cheese or you just take a swig of the wine. Uh, nothing wrong with table wine yeah. and table cheese. Yeah. A 12 year old walks by and she's like, <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. 10 a.m. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They're home. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of the lifestyle. It is. You know? It is. It is. You got to. Um, um, no, that's great. So hopefully great, that great, helps great. with uh, suggestions. And then yes. whatever you're you're drinking, have fun. Yeah. This, these, the, the the next three, I. They're wild. They're all over the place. And so there's nothing that is going to be the perfect one for all of them. But um, just just play around. I'd actually be interested yeah. to see what you're drinking and, then, and what your feedback is. Yeah, we've got someone drinking Mal, um, Malvasia, if I pronounce it right, Bianca, uh -huh. another beautiful white wine uh -huh. um, that uh, claims it goes very good with the Cordofiano as well. Yeah. So again, something crisp and light like that. Yep. 
I love bubbles with any of the cheese more than just plain water. <laughs> yeah. It cleanses the palate of the creaminess of the cheese. So little tip there. It's a tex uh, textural um, effect. And I, yeah. when it comes to pairing, you can go with flavor, you can go with region, or you can go with texture. And that's, that's kind of yeah. going along the lines mm -hmm. of, of texture. Mm -hmm. I love sparkling anything. Yeah. Um, Those are really creamy. Even soda I really like with the cheese. Remember? Here's another one we'll do sometime. Remember that we went to Cypress Grove and oh, they yeah. did truffle tremor with, with Coca-Cola. Was it Coca-Cola? Yes. Yeah. Would you, who would put that together? But it was really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really good. It's funny. You know what, what, what one we should do is wacky, weird Oh, parents. wacky, weird. I'm writing that down. Write it down. Wacky and weird. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. um, this is kind of wacky and weird, but okay. <laughs> but after you get through the first one, feel free to kind of munch on the other cheeses and, and we'll talk about them as we go through. So we'll kind of weave back and forth between um, the, the creativity talk and the cheeses. Vodka martini is another recommendation for this. Yes. Yeah. Instead of an olive, well, with, on top of an olive, could you just put a wedge of this in the martini? Yes. That'd be cool. <laughs> There's a bar downtown that gives a wedge of Parmigiano, Reggiano, which is a chunk, with every Negroni that oh, they make. Yes. Mm. That's a good That's a good. Wacky one. and wild. I'm just writing it down. <laughs> 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 we digress. Keep going. <laughs> um, so I, I guess, um, you know, we, we talk a little bit about... Um, you know, cheese makers, how they are, they tend to be creatives and, and they're, they're, it's, I say labor of love because most of these guys are, are farmers and there's, there's razor thin margins and everything that we do. And that, you know, they might be celebrities to us, but I don't, they're, they're not, they're not Jeff Bezos by any, by any means. <laughs> no, um, no. But, uh, you know, so w w I, I think what, what it is, was once you sort of catch that bug early on, it's it's addicting. I mean, they're 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 doing it because they want to see what they can do, what they can come up with, um, if this next batch is going to be better than the previous batch, or how they're different. It's all it's all trial and error, experimentation, mm -hmm. and just seeing what happens. And um, that's a lot of the fun of it. And you know, I was I was as I was thinking about this um, this talk we were doing. Mm -hmm. I I mean, I have my own process that I go through, and I was. Um, first of all, I, 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 I get myself set up to, if I'm feeling more left brained or right brained, I get myself set up to, to yeah. allow the other side of the brain to work, to, to, function. Yeah. to, to get mm -hmm. going. And so, um, basically what I'm referring to is like the left brain versus the right brain is just a theory that one, one side of your brain is more dominant than the mm -hmm. other. And the left side is... You? the more analytical, yeah. methodical, where at, and then the right brain is more of the artistic, creative side. That makes you the professor. Well, maybe. I mm -hmm. well, I guess what I'm what I'm getting at is that everybody has both. Yeah, okay, that's so true. A little bit of both. Every, mm -hmm. A little bit or even a lot bit yeah. of both. But maybe don't know it. And you don't know it. Mm -hmm. And so I know people who are so freaking black and white. A lot of my financial friends, a lot of my business friends are way more like left brained yeah and then of course you know your artists the artists exactly but the like roger he's our you know kind of um <laughs> cx like the the G money man you know usually the logical Gina's man. husband okay my husband yes <laughs> the money man but i tell you he has a creative thing that sometimes uh -huh. pops out i'm like where did that come from yeah. i thought you were a left brain guy yeah, yeah, yeah. um so it is interesting yeah. well so i i guess where, where i'm going is like you you need to have if, in order to be productive you do need to have a little bit of both and so if you are like if you're more left dominated mm -hmm. then you need to figure out a way to tap into the right side of your brain and you may be shocked by what you find in there but you'll never find it unless you have yeah. the discipline to sit down and let it come out there's your left brain talking <laughs> it probably it is. is yeah it so is I, I mean you, yeah, but Gina it works for you the, i will sit yeah. down and i will literally schedule myself i'll say two hours I'm an early bird. I'll be like from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. I'm going to get up and I'm going to sit there with a blank document and I'm going to write no matter what. I'm going to create something. Yeah, and you and, do it. Well, but you know what? Sometimes it's the third time I sit down because the first two times I spend two hours going, I have nothing. I have nothing. And I write it down. Right. I, I have, have nothing. nothing. I have nothing. You're I have sorry. nothing. Okay. This is like the shining. But I would. very worried. <laughs> All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. All work and no play makes you Jack a dull boy. You made me think of the lobotomy in the... Well, no, that was in The Shining. That's one flew over the cuckoo's desk. Same sorry. guy, though. I mean, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but the right brain, left brain talk. <laughs> but, um, no, but, like, it, you, seriously, like, you have to go through four hours of yeah. all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. 
Is that what it, it is? Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what, you have to do four hours of that until you get to the four hour and one minute mark. Okay. And for the that's where the creativity happened. But you had to go through that four hours to get there. Do you to see what it. I'm saying? Well, yes, You had to I force do. it. Yeah. And, and so, like, if you're a writer, yeah. you have to sit down and write every day. And it's going to suck for the first few months. But then if you look at your writing a year after you start, it's a million times better. If you paint every day, if you, you can sit in front of YouTube and watch an instructional video of a painting, do it three times in a row. Yeah. Then look, suddenly you can paint a little, right? Watch yeah. how much your brush strokes improve. Yeah. Well, it's like anything. you got to practice. Do you see um, the Billie Eilish the carpool karaoke? Oh. That whole story of the, t- the 10,000 hours it oh. needs to become g- really good at mm-hmm. something. Mm-hmm. They had that written on their wall. Who um, does? Eilish is? Eilish and her brother. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, I can't fin- remember is his Finnegan name. or yes, something? Yes, exactly. Phineas? 10,000 hours because they just knew I think you know if we just keep plugging we just keep doing it it's going to be amazing Gina, you, like we, what these cheesemakers you can read do. my mind so my process <laughs> was I, didn't read your mind. I sat there yes last night or this morning and I just I bullet thoughts phrases thoughts and one of them it just says 10,000 hours it's one oh my says gosh, that's hilarious brush yeah. strokes one says talent is overrated which is one of my favorite quotes because everybody goes, I don't have talent. you're so, or, or they say, you're so talented. You have, and no, 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 that was a skill that was <laughs> developed over time. It looks easy for that person, but it's because they put in 10,000 hours. And yeah. that comes from, uh, I think it comes from the Malcolm Gladwell essay. It is, exactly, yeah. And there's, and of course there's people, I say they're idiots, who, um, who will criticize <laughs> that study and they say, well, he uses an example of like the Beatles playing in the, some small yeah. town in Germany. Yeah. And and they're like, well, you know, it's actually five thousand hours, or it's twenty thousand. It doesn't matter. It's hard work and repetition. That's why. I, Breathe. <laughs> I'm getting excited here. Okay. It is. It is hard work, repetition. It doesn't matter. Like yeah. that's all semantics. It's so it. true. It yeah. is so true. Um, yeah. But uh, so I guess if if you are and I've been, I've been in meetings with people who are so right brain that they just vomit ideas all over the place and I can't do anything with it because you can't corral them. So if that's if if you have that, yes. then come up with a process. Whether it is emailing yourself, whether it is scheduling time, whether it is go in your Google Drive and open a document and just basically vomit on it, and then. And then come yeah. back to it a day later mm-hmm. and organize those thoughts a I little bit more. I bet you it comes, becomes clearer yes. then because you did that first step. Yeah. Kate Evans agrees with you. Talents overrated, great idea for a book essay. Oh, yeah. I should, <laughs> yeah. I was should gonna, do it. You know, <laughs> you I was going to say, I was going to um, write an email to Malcolm Gladwell, but I should do it. Well, <laughs> right, don't give don't him that idea. Bing. And one of the first things about yeah. creativity is not ha- don't be afraid to fail. Um, nine out of ten ideas don't work. We know this. We do. We try so many. Mm-hmm. Yeah, true. We've tried so many things over the mm-hmm. years. Most of them don't work, but we feel good about if we if we fail, we feel good that we've process. tried it. Exactly. And we've gone through a process, and maybe hopefully get better. And maybe years down the road, mm-hmm. it will work, or maybe mm-hmm. we tweak something and it works. If um, when when we're in. When I'm in, I should speak for myself. When I'm in meetings with people, yeah. and I don't have this issue with Gina, but when I'm in meetings with people, and their knee jerk is to say, "No, it's not going to work," I, I want to say, "Hold on, let's think of why this will work." And find what's the one little part of my idea that you yeah. don't think works. Let's let's identify that part and yeah. change it to where it will work. It could work exactly. Take that little curd, yeah. tweak it so it's <laughs> just perfect. And, and cheese makers do yeah, do that they do too. that all the time. That these cheeses don't get made overnight. Like they have epic fails. Yeah, you know, before they like, oh, that tastes right. That's the balance I need. That's the age it needs. That's the milk it needs. Exactly. Yeah, it's all trial and error, and you don't know. Yeah. Like the first time you make a cheese, you have no idea what age it needs no. because. If you if you release it at nine months, sh- shoot, you'll never know if it would have been better at twelve months. <laughs> exactly. Um, yes. But they always have they always have their experiments. We talked about this last yeah. time too. They're all experimenting. It's so cool and, and, and innovating. And they yeah, make mistakes. The and guess what? Sometimes you get criticized. Yeah. Um, sometimes people put you down. You're an you're a madman. You're an idiot. Um, when you have a new idea until it's proven then you're a genius <laughs> yeah yeah you know and it's kind of true right people look at you like mm, that's crazy until it works and then it's like genius oh yeah. any genius yeah. throughout history for sure was, yeah I mean, was that way and a lot of and a lot of them yeah. 
they died, uh, you know, in uh, a lot of them, you know, died with, without yeah. any recognition for, for what they did. It's crazy. And, yeah, uh, it's crazy. Can I go before we go? Because you were talking about innovative cheeses. I think we should go to the Belper next Belper, because it's it. so weird. But lots of suggestions on wines. We have everybody, everybody's drinking Sunday night. Good, we like <laughs> I need it. To, I should have, I, I need hey, to it's go a, back it's to a COVID. It's all good. Sunday nights in 2020 are different, okay? Okay, Gina? Sunday nights in 2020. What did I read? This is what I mean. <laughs> liquor, liquor, noun, the glue holding this shit show together. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. And obviously everyone's agreeing. So, maybe other you get that recommendation. Tattoo. Maybe that's what I'll do this one. <laughs> um, but we talked about the Malvasia Bianca, um, Pinot Grigio, we know would be good. Somebody's drinking this uh, a Gruner Ventliner, yes. Austrian wine. Yep. That one's so well known. Not well known. It should be. It's hard to pronounce. I think people just are kind of scared of it. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's always a great wine. So great call on really that, good Mary. Really cheese wine. Um, and then a Rosso Veronese. So a Verona, a Ros- a red, red from Verona. Yeah. Sounds lovely. Because those Italian ones tend to be that lighter, uh-huh. beautiful. So that works. Great. Love that recommendation. And then... We had a question um, about the peppers, really quick. Peruvian sweetie drops. Mm-hmm. Um, we have them now, I think, at all the shops. We're starting to even put them on trays and plates all the time because they're so delicious. There's a lot of yeah. pepper on these on this plate because we got the pepper. pimento, we got the four alarm. <laughs> black pepper, four alarm pepper, uh-huh. chili pepper, oh, yeah, sriracha peppers. Pepper. <laughs> pepper, 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 pepper. So uh, let's talk about the Belper. Belper Canor. Yes. Yeah, so Swiss, and this is innovative, Rob. The, this is so different. Method of production that I was reading. Because, you know, most um, cheeses, they take it and they introduce rennet to coagulate mm-hmm. the cheese, um, separate the curds from the whey. This one's kind of almost made like a yogurt or something where they mm-hmm. just let acid, the acidification mm-hmm. of the milk, form the curd. And then they just literally form little balls of cheese um, and incorporate Himalayan sea salt and garlic inside. Mm-hmm and then let them rest on wooden planks, you know, in these Swiss caves. You can just picture this. It's just so idyllic. Is that sanitary though? (laughs) (laughs) This will keeping it all on good notes. (laughs) It is sanitary, by the way. It is, it's really good. Um, And then they roll it in the black pepper Mm. to give it the flavor. Mm. But I understood that they also, the reason is they typically make the big Alpine cheeses, you know, in Switzerland, but then they'll have some milk left over. Again, it's innovative to not waste a bit of the milk Mm -hmm. they're going to form these little cheeses the balls you guys are less than a baseball i don't know what size ball that is bigger than a golf ball less than a smaller than a baseball um and really this cheese you have to just taste it but we wanted to give it just because it is so innovative as a taste it is meant to go over any food like Mm -hmm. it's just great grated on pasta Mm -hmm. right because you've got all those flavors the seasonings inside um but with i think it would be really good with the apricot jam yeah, time. I would yeah. mix it with something. And mm-hmm. you probably have a bunch of little crumbs, too, from yeah. where it got taste the cut up. The, mm-hmm. So the crumbs mm-hmm. are good. Throw them, yeah. throw them into, like, your risotto or anything. Yes, um, super, du- super duper good. So it's, I mean, the texture is so unique on that. It's uh-huh. so different from, and it has to do with the way it's made. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's with that um, that acidic fermentation. Um, Belper comes from the town of Belp. <laughs> this is why it's called Belper. Right? You know what the knoll is? Belper. So the name... Ball kind of close uh all from belp <laughs> actually means tuber 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 from belp <laughs> because it, it resembles a mushroom it does which also i've heard it called a truffle the yeah. cheese truffle or something well so <laughs> yes little note on uh-huh. that chocolate truffles yes are named for the uh tuber, tuber truffle. truffles the true oh, Big, oh don't chocolate fans will hate me the true truffle <laughs> the chocolate, underground truffle chocolate truffles <laughs> it's so funny because like we, when we do like truffle tastings or truffle cheeses, sometimes people go, they go, oh, there's chocolate in that cheese? And I'm like, no, 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 no. Chocolate came after the tubers. Chocolate <laughs> takes its name, oh, the chocolate they, truffles. They were there first. It's like when somebody says, um, oh my God, the Rolling Stones stole that song Satisfied from Britney Spears. It's like, no, 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 it's the other way around. It's the other way around. Okay, you're setting it straight. <laughs> There's your left brain. Setting it straight. It's got to set it straight. Who the innovator was, who the creator was. <laughs> but, uh, so it's from, it is a Swiss cheese, yeah. unlike any Swiss yeah. cheese I've ever it's so odd. tasted yeah. or seen. Um, um, the but, comments are about the chalky texture. Yeah. Which is so weird. I get the pepper, garlic. Yeah, this one, shave on something. But again, I think a little bit of that on the cracker with the apricot jam could be quite good. Because oh. the sweet and the salt. I don't know. Let's try it. 
I'm just gonna say right now, it's not like a snack on its own type of cheese. No, this is odd, an oddity. We wanted an oddity on the list, so yeah. we're gonna try. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm. Better. Little kick. It's sharp. Little kick to it. There's a lot of pepper on there. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. Bell oh, boy. Bell Bernal. You can even shave it with a truffle shaver. If anybody has a truffle shaver, it works well. And it, this mm-hmm. is a fairly new cheese. It was invented in 1993. And that's new yeah, for Yeah, so that's kind of new in the cheese world. Um, a few of you out there might not have that on your plate. If you have a blue on there, we could tell you that that was smoky blue. Yeah. We just ran out at the very end of the um, Belper. So if you are out there and you want us to talk about smoky blue, give me a shout out. Um, and we will. But if you have it, it's from Oregon. They smoke a blue, which is so innovative because nobody kind of had done that before. That's the first smoked blue. Smoked blue. And they use hazelnut chips Uh because usually you hear applewood, maplewood, you know, Uh um, all of other kinds of woods. But they actually use hazelnut um, chips, you know, the shells, hazelnut shells. Yeah. Um, And hazelnuts are very European, much more popular in Europe than they are here. Um, northern, not northern Italy is a big hazelnut. Oh yeah, hazelnut place. zone. Um, so super innovative idea for them to do that there in uh, Oregon at Rogue River Creamery. Yeah, a couple mm-hmm. of fun notes on on this one. So it's called Smoky Blue. That name was inspired mm-hmm. inspired by Smoky Bear. Smoky Bear. I thought Smoky and the Bandit. That good one. We can go with that. That's good. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, it is it is. So it's made up at Rogue Creamery up in um, just on the other side of the Oregon border from. Uh, from California, so it's central southern, it's, mm-hmm. yeah, it's central Oregon, and uh, the creamery was originally um, opened by the Vela family, who oh, yeah. they do the dry Ig, jack. Ig, Ig Vela. Yeah, his mm-hmm. and his father, I forget his name, but they started it and they they eventually sold it to the to the Rogue Creamery folks, yeah. and they made the first the first blue cheese on the West Coast, really. Yeah, so this came before Point Reyes and some of the uh, the well. Yeah. That's the only other really, really famous blue. Famous blue. There's shafts now. There's a couple others. That's right. But, um, that's, that's way yeah, newer. But, way new. Um, but the first mm-hmm. uh, first, first blue uh, that was smoked, at least that we know of, yeah. I mean, there's probably someone doing it in their, uh, yeah. you know, in their backyard, mm-hmm. you know, in, in France <laughs> a couple thousand years ago or something. But um, it, one, of the, one of the ways that cheeses got smoked, and we talk about ingenuity and innovation, and um, was shepherds who used to mm-hmm. kind of travel around and camp out every night they would they would of course have their animals with them and the animals had to be milked twice a day yeah there's no rest there's no break yeah. they would put up their mm-hmm. their uh you know their their teepee or what do they call it a, a girt teepee <laughs> yurt <laughs> yurt <laughs> Girt's your mom <laughs> they're yurts and uh but they would cook under yeah. them and the and so they would hang their That's cheese right, on the rafters yeah. to age them Just... and the smoke would go up in in kind of mm-hmm. uh naturally to smoke the uh, the cheeses and so that's how some cheeses got smoked yeah. but uh i was thinking when, when they um when, you know when i read that thing about the smoky smoky bear smoky blue and yeah. the name was inspired well american cheese makers and we have one other or a couple other american cheeses yeah. american cheese cheese makers can be very creative with their names yes that is what they excel at the marketing mm-hmm. of the names because sometimes you just get berg queso <laughs> Mountain cheese, yeah. So not a creative name. Uh-huh. Then you got humble fog, and how romantic that is, you know. Awesome as opposed, name. yeah. Names are are key. Yeah. What are some like? Uh, what's Shauna's name? Was uh, oh, fat, fat bottom, bottom girl. Fat bottom girl. Yeah. So because good. she didn't flip the cheese, so and it so got fat on the bottom. Fat on the bottom. Clever. And she, she and was, it was a queen cheese. fan. Yep, exactly. Who wouldn't be? Uh, Who <laughs> wouldn't be? Oh my God, Polenta. Rob, back to the Belper real quick. Yeah. Oh, Polenta. Polenta. Yeah, yes. It'd be a good one. So Carol, thank you for that tip. Polenta used the Belper in. Um, okay, and we ha- we made a convert. Um, was it, ca- uh, wait, who said Jason? Usually not a fan of blues, but mm-hmm. kind of likes the smoke in it. Yeah. yeah, that's just a hint. It's not overwhelming, so it's kind of nice. So that's a good, funny, that's great mm-hmm. that you're introduced to blues in this way and to see that, oh, they're so different. We could do another one of all the blues. Totally, and yeah. so many different things. I mean, we can do all blue cheeses and, and they can be completely different. Different textures, different, and blue doesn't really, Blue cheese doesn't really say much, except that it's the color blue from the mold that's in the cheese. So they can come from anywhere, be any type of milk. Um, they can be smoked. They can be they can be uh, soft. They can be hard. They can be very very blue, or they can be hardly any blue at all. 
Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, so they're it's just crazy. They really vary. There's another innovation, you know, how much blue, yeah. how the blue's introduced. Could go into that as and well. For, yeah, and for so some crazy. of them, like for example, Gorgonzola, they'll make they'll make ver- multiple versions. They'll, they'll make a mild version, which they call dolce sweet. And they'll make a, 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 a stronger version, which they call picante, which is means spicy, but it just means it's got yeah. more bluing in the more yeah. blue veins. In, exactly, in the exactly. And we've got a question of the four alarm. Are we saving that for the end, or are you gonna do that next? Um, or are you gonna do Red Hawk? I think let's do Red Hawk okay. next. Then we'll get to the answer of which peppers are in that four alarm. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, we'll yeah. do Red Hawk though, because otherwise it'll blast, blast shall the we, taste shall we away. Do Red Hawk yeah, now? let's do Red Hawk. Okay. Um, <laughs> so Red Hawk is from Northern California. It is from uh, Cowgirl Creamery. And uh, some of you may know Cowgirl Creamery. They're, they're I would, I would say that they're iconic, uh, California cheese maker. They, um, along with Humboldt Fog, which is from Cypress Grove, Cowgirl Creamery makes some of the, uh, the, the yeah most iconic California cheeses. Mm-hmm. Mountain Tam is their, their main cheese. It's their flagship, and it's a triple cream brie made with cow's milk. And they're, they have a storefront in the Ferry Building in San Francisco, mm-hmm. but they make their cheese in Point Reyes Station, which is in uh, Marin County, mm-hmm. and uh, they are in West Marin, and uh, so they were making, okay, so they, they were making Mount Tam, the cheese they're known for. They were aging it in their aging room there in West Marin, mm-hmm. and um, during, uh, I forget what time of the year it was, but basically a, um, a type of bacteria was, was in the air, it was ambient. Floating around. Floating there, around. Yeah. And good it, bacteria. It's good bacteria. Mm-hmm. And it came in and it hit some of the Mount Tams that were aging. And they came in one morning and they're like, wow, these Mount Tams look and yeah. smell different. And they were very alarmed, right? Like, the, mm-hmm. oh no. It was a four alarm. My, I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've ruined the cheese. The cheese is ruined, right? Yeah. But the, instead of mm-hmm. tossing them, they're like, well, let's, let's just let's see. Let's just taste it. <laughs> let's see what happens. And they taste them. Like, these are kind of fun. Yeah. And what they did then was. They took so a, they made a brine, mm-hmm. which is a, a salt water solution, yeah. and they started washing those cheeses mm-hmm. to, rather than, like, kill the bacteria, they yeah. encouraged it. Encourage it. Because they're like, this was a, how many times are accidents great creations and innovations? Yes. That's why yes. I, that's why I started mm-hmm. that, that story by saying they were going through the process. Mm-hmm. If you just go through the process, you will be heading one direction, yeah. like, don't ever marry yourself to your finished idea when you start. Like, yeah, it's gonna go like this. You know, go go in yeah. a direction, but be be open to changing direction. Yes. You know what Yogi Bear said: when there's a fork in the road, take it. Take it. Okay, that was the thing. I was or just gonna like say. That. You know what I heard <laughs> is when you're walking and carrying a cup, don't look at the cup. Look at where you're going. Oh, you know? yeah. Because see, because otherwise, if you look at the cup. It, it becomes impossible to like keep it from spilling, right? And being a mess. But if you just know where you're going, no matter what, you're gonna get to you, the. You you won't be able to see the forest through the trees. Oh God, here we go. <laughs> let's just keep this talk we'll keep in the only theme. in only. The... <laughs> what is that? It's not hyperbole. It's only in metaphors. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, which word it is? But <laughs> one of those. <laughs> one of those. But this is a happy accident. It's I a love happy accident. This isn't too powerful today. No. Is, that was the one you juggled, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> and this one can be a stinker, you guys. Oh, yeah. Um, it's mild today. It's mild but today. It's still, it's still Yeah, it's still got a little stink to it. Definitely t- smell the rind, smell your fingers. Um, but use it with the apricot again, the apricot jam, I think, with this one's awesome. And I think all the wine people, uh, we had a question, you know, what might go with Sauvignon Blanc or Chardonnay earlier. I feel that Red Hawk is more a Sauv Blanc um, cheese. Mm. The Chardonnay might be really buttery, but you can tell me if I'm wrong. Um, so some one of the yeah, only... Yeah, I think the Chardonnay with this pepper, the Bel Pernol would be good. FYI, Chardonnay and Sauv Blanc, but if see what you think. If it is one yeah. of those really buttery Chardonnays, because not all of uh-huh. them have uh-huh. that, but the exactly. really buttery ones with a triple cream, they can just, it just tastes like a stick of butter in your yeah. mouth. It could be too much. Mm-hmm. Um, Saw Blanc gives more of like a contrast. It has more uh, acidity, and uh, so I, th- I think the Saw would do a little yeah, better. A the little only, bit. only issue that sometimes Saw has with a washed rind like this is they it could it could potentially not stand up to the Red Hawk. But since yeah. it's milder, it might. Yeah, it might be a the, good test. The mm-hmm. Gruner, uh, I think, the would, be would be even better. Yeah, that. and I think the Rosso, the oh. that was somebody was drinking, would be good. And I think martinis kind of kind of go with any of them, so I think and everybody's good out there with the with the the libations today. And, and beer. And beer. Oh well, yeah, beer, the bubbles, all good. I'm gonna stick with the chardonnay though. My vo- vote is gonna be chardonnay with the four alarm. Ooh. I'm gonna say that just because I think chardonnay goes with the herby things really good yeah. and vegetal and 
spicy. Mm. So anyway, we digress. Also, it's interesting, Rob, you can taste talk about how sometimes the cheese is really stinky, but then you taste it and it's really mild. And that's what Jason noticed, that it yeah. smells strong, but then you taste it. And I, Limburger is totally that way, if you ask me. You smell Limburger and you're like, oh, no, I'm not eating that. And then you eat it and it's like kind of not so bad. Limburger yeah. is one of those, it gets a bad rap. And I, and I don't know how many people I've spoken to who say, oh, I had, I grew up in Wisconsin or I had an uncle who would have Limburger around and it was like the worst thing ever. I don't know, maybe it used to be stronger, but like the Limburgers we get now are not that crazy. No, um, it's not. Mm -hmm. It like- um, Maybe you're just used to stronger smells now. Maybe, but Limburger is not, it's it's a considered a washed rind or stinky cheese, but it's not as strong yeah. as say a real Munster or yes. a stinking Bishop. Um, there's another, there's a cheese from- Beulil was voted stinkiest. Was it? Yeah, what are you thinking? Uh, to me, it, it well, it depends on the ripeness of it, of course. Of course but yeah. the stinkiest cheeses I've ever had are a really ripe stinking bishop <laughs> or a really ripe monster. To be honest, yeah, monster I think takes the cake. And sorry, people, stinking bishop still not available. We'll keep trying. Yeah, we'll keep trying. Yeah, we'll keep trying. I mean, it just mm -hmm. like. I, even, I, I was gonna say what it, what it smells like to me sometimes, but now I don't want to say it. <laughs> it just smells like urine. To, like it's, oh. it's smell, like, <laughs> like there's that quality in the little. I know, I know, of, cat um, pee. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the flavor is notes. always milder mm -hmm. than the smell. Yeah. Um, and uh, but I was, the Red Hawk's nice. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about the like some of the Wisconsin cheeses that. Uh, Eat that that are out there that that people will talk about like later later crowns was one that was oh yeah it was more um for any midwest people like or i don't know if the germans brought it over for yes. their version of limburger and it's basically mm -hmm. like a limburger yeah. um brick cheese which is another one oh, from, yeah. from wisconsin there's a couple make people that still make it it's yeah. sort of like a it's a it's a hybrid and american cheeses will sometimes do this it's we are a melting pot so all the cultures come here and they and it, and, and, and they 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 mix in the in the cuisine yeah. uh, is a representation of that so like brick cheese is a mix of cheddar and limburger mm -hmm. and it's um so it's sort of in between yeah it's a Amer it's an american creation creation of it foxglove is a stinker that yeah. americans have created that it's kind of a cross i think between a brick and um yeah. a limburger yeah. a little square um, crazy, innovative. Again, it's like taking something that they know people want or mm -hmm. love, and then putting a twist on it that makes it unique. I yeah. was just thinking about that today. So, um, t I mean, we're saying a lot of names here. So, um, but yeah. but uh, there's a there's a cheese called Good Thunder, mm. and we had it this week in North Park, and I was using it for some events. But it's it's a little square. It's like the Fox Glove from in Indiana, I think, mm -hmm. and it's a uh, it's a washed rind, but. I was reading the story of the cheesemaker, yeah. and they're in, in Minnesota, I think I said yeah. that, but they, they make a couple of cheeses. They make a, a Minnesota version of camembert, so it's just, it's their take on the, the classic French camembert, and then they make this other one called Good Thunder, and, and yeah. Good Thunder, believe it or not, is the name of a town in Minnesota. Cool That's, name. Yeah, it's a very cool name, mm -hmm. and it is their stinky washed rind cheese, and it's based on a French cheese called Reblochon. Instead of washing it in a brine like they do for Reblochon, they wash it in a local Minnesota beer. So that's their spin on it. And uh, so those are just a couple of hundreds, if not thousands of examples of these yeah. types of things. Exactly, and all with fun. their it's own so little fun. something to them. Yeah. Their own little twist. Because isn't all creation now, I mean, some of that, most things have been created, food, you know, yeah. they've been done. Like yeah. cheese has been around for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. How do you just keep improving on it or not even improving on it, just changing it, mm -hmm. keeping it new? Keeping Keep it, it fresh, fresh with the times, yeah. exactly. And everything's like that. I mean, film and music, but it's it's really, I mean, there it's it's uh, it's limitless what you can do with with with, with these um, with, the, with these different uh, disciplines, I guess. Um, yeah, it's so cool. Uh, yeah, and lists of cheeses. This is came up, and George, and thanks, George, you're always here. Thank you. Really appreciate the support. I'm going to put all the lists of all the cheeses we've tasted for all these sessions oh. and Sunday sessions, Why No Wednesdays, whiskeys. We just did the tequila one. Yeah. And, yes, I'm doing a page on our site, on the events page. So, George, give me a couple days, um, and then I'm going to put a link on our events page mm -hmm. that says, here's what we've tasted. 
to kind of see. Yeah. Um, so that is really great. I think we Would need a put, central. Maybe put like virtual number one yep. and then list exactly. which ones for Yep, because then you could also always cross-reference back to YouTube yeah. of which one that was. On the YouTube channel, I try to put the cheeses on each of the episodes. Sometimes I forget. Yeah. Um, so I will do that, a page of that. Most indefinitely. Well, you need to have a process so you don't forget things. I do need a process. That's and your right brain taking over. No, because, yeah, I'm one of those, <laughs> oh, let's try this. Oh, look over here, squirrel. You know, I just all the different ideas. So I, I do need the process to get there and make it happen. We have a hummingbird that wants food. Um, awesome. Okay. okay. So list coming. Um, and the other thing, to uh, I have to give a caveat about that. Um, we will not have... A lot some of those cheeses sometimes in the shops yeah this is the key this is I know it's so difficult everyone and kind of sometimes can be annoying but not all shops have the same cheeses and we don't always have the same cheeses all the time let me put it this way we have room for maybe a hundred and twenty five hundred and fifty and but there's tens of thousands of cheeses out there so that means we only have one out of a hundred of, of ten thousand yeah. cheeses. Mm. So, so it's they always rotate. What, but what, what is good is like I'm, I'm recreating. Sometimes I get asked to recreate um, plates for the past classes, yeah. and I just if there's four cheeses, six cheeses, like someone wants to do the whiskey class, yeah. I'm giving them similar cheeses. Exactly, because so there are so many similarities that has a, yeah. like a similar flavor profile. So you sure, still sure. get. The, the maximum, you know. Yeah, and the mongers can benefit. always find that one that's the closest mm -hmm. to what we've had. Yeah, for sure. Two of your biggest fans are watching. Oh yeah. Sam and Delina, do you know them? Oh yeah, family. <laughs> I'm surprised she, she doesn't get enough of me at home. I guess. <laughs> um. Oh, here's an idea too. Pictures of each plate as a good reference. Yes. That is a good one. Super good ideas. We get so many ideas. Thank you. Um, Did we take pictures, I hope? <laughs> I took one picture. Oh, not You can't take it now. It's, it's, now it's demolished. It's horrible, I did have the tequila one, but here on out. That's a good reference for sure. <laughs> <laughs> too many. The world is crazy, but I love all this. Thank you. I love it. Awesome. Now we have to talk about four alarm because everybody's asking. Four alarm. What is in that cheese? Okay. Yeah. Well, so it's four peppers. <laughs> I wrote them down so you I wouldn't forget them. I, I, okay, I'll see if I can. Okay, okay I'll, we're, we're going to quiz you. Habanero? Uh, no. Oh, <laughs> can you tell us? <laughs> Ch chipotle? Chipotle, yum. Smoky. Chili pepper. Of course. Jalapeno. Hot. And ghost. Oh, there's the kicker then. Uh -huh. The ghost is the one that's sending it over the top, right? Because <laughs> the other cheeses we've had, like Firehouse and yeah. stuff, don't have the ghost pepper yeah, in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On that scale of, you know one to a million particles of heat i think ghosts are way up there right is it smoked as well or no? well, the chipotle. chipotle yeah, mm -hmm. yeah chipotle super it. smoky and then ch chili pepper is kind of the classic oh you can totally smell <laughs> the smoke <laughs> fire or alarm do you have any milk <laughs> yeah right that one just right away wow this is the hottest spiciest cheese we've had oh oh it's far. still going mm -hmm. it's still going oh yeah Oh, I love it. But I think this would be good with Chardonnay. I think it'd be kick-ass with the martini. Uh, you know personally, what? I do. Anyone have any mezcal or tequila left? <laughs> yeah, if you, if you joined and have mezcal or tequila, whoa. Mm -hmm. We should have done that. That'd be good, too. That's all good. Yeah. But, uh, yeah that's fun. Ooh. Okay. So, um, we got a tip that the Rosso, both the Rosso and the Gruner Ventliner uh -huh. went well with all the cheeses. Yeah. Again. Those are really versatile. Those, those are, are really wines. good picks for wines. Yes. Good ones. We'll have to do, because they're obscure wines. We'll have uh -huh. to do obscures uh -huh. like this because they are. So thank you, Mary. I, I love that. I, I wish I had some. <laughs> what else can we say about the Four Alarm? Where it's from? It's from um, Milton Milton Creamery. Mm -hmm. And it's I think the family is called Husser, the Husser family. Yeah. Husser, I don't know how to pronounce it. But yeah. they are Mennonites. And we, we've done another cheese from them. They're from Iowa. From Iowa. Yeah, they were. It was created. Were you created in Iowa? I was. Well, sort of. Oh, Iowa. My okay. dad was created in Iowa, okay. and I was came out of my dad. So, okay. well, <laughs> I mean, yeah, uh, sort sort There's of a down, down the line. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's stop. Um, the uh, no, but they they are from uh, um, the Mennonites are sort of yeah. a like a they're kind of related to the to Amish, mm -hmm. um, so, a similar sort of culture, way of life, background, right? And kind way of, of life. Yeah. Very Ooh, much into this. DIY ingenuity, um, mm -hmm. you know, do, do it yourself. And so they, they, they make a lot of things. They, you know, they, they make, uh, they do farming. They, they, 
they churn their own butter. They make their own tools. Cheese. Very low, a lot of low tech stuff. Kind of our version of the monks in a way. Yeah. The monks do the same modern in day the monasteries and. Mm-hmm. And great appreciation for for what they do. A lot of pride in what they do, and uh, so they they make a they make a bunch of cheeses, mostly cheddars, if not all cheddars. And this is just their their spicy, uh, their spicy cheddar. Oops, we got papers blowing around here. Um, we got and, somebody uh, from Des Moines, Jess, watching. Oh yeah? so, uh, Jess she's watching from in her, Des Moines. Yeah. Oh, no, that's from, cool. uh, was from Des Moines. But oh, oh. Now is eating this oh. Iowan. Gotcha. Iowan cheese. I, Iowanian. I'm not sure. Uh, Hawkeye. Say. Hawkeye cheese. Hawkeye cheese. Unless Ooh. you're, unless you're a uh, what's Iowa Hawkeye. State. Uh, cyclone. Unless you're a cyclone, I'm sorry. <laughs> Another <laughs> big <debate>. rivalry. <laughs> I'm getting big trouble here. Yeah. But that one, I mean, it's a brick um, cheddar, and that uh-huh. literally means it's formed in the shape like of a law of a brick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can see the cheddar curds. You know, they just press those curds together. That's why it breaks like it does, you guys, because uh-huh. they just mix the the rough curd with that blend of peppers. Yeah. Pack it all together, and let it. You know, um, what's the term called when they when it melts together? Oh my God, in oh, cheddar. Amalgamate. No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh. Let it stitch. Doesn't it stitch together? Yeah. The, don't the curds kind of stitch themselves yeah. together? I don't know. Is the technical term. I was. But. I think that, that term amalgamate is, I, I think I heard that when I was watching like um, one of those shows about somebody who was really big and they, amal- they amalgamated with their couch. They like grew into their couch. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. But um, the, it's really interesting. And we talked about cheddar on the last one mm-hmm. where they, they cut the curds. So... The liquid milk turns into curds and whey, yeah. and the curds are the solid. And for if you're gonna make a harder cheese, you just cut the curds into smaller pieces, really, oh, because that's true. that is the first step in, in expelling whey or getting rid of moisture. And then it's about what how you manipulate the curd, and it's the it's the same process really for any cheese you make. That's true. But they they're different because of little tweaks that cheesemakers do. Yeah. Of in that Innovative process. Yeah. So like. For cheddar, they will they will cut the curd into a bunch of little pieces. Then they'll they'll like kind of put them all together and, and they'll like stitch. And then they cut those curds yeah. which have stuck together. And then uh-huh. they'll stack those on top yeah, of each other. Yeah, let those stitch together. It's yeah, it's an interesting process. Cheddaring, to, yeah. To I don't know how, how or why mm-hmm. anyone first started doing that. Yeah, but good innovation. You know, it must have been with the equipment that they had. Yeah. Or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. To, um, or they to had to. With that. They had to make it um, yeah. acidify in order. Maybe that was a way for it to not go bad or something before refrigeration. Yeah. Like so, you know something like that. Mm-hmm. But it's it was things were almost always they were inevitably done for uh, practical purposes. And yeah. Na- and now it's necessity. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And and it, one was like you know milk, liquid milk, and fresh young cheese is so perishable it goes bad. But you can't let good food ever go to waste because they're so they're so full of nutrients and they're so yeah. they are so um, energy dense. You yeah. know, you're not gonna waste anything. You can't yeah. waste anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and so well, uh, it's like now doing you know the uh, nose to tail. You know, you're gonna yeah. eat all the parts and realize that there's uh-huh. all, it's all good. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing, nothing goes cheese, to waste. Nothing goes to waste. The way it gets used mm-hmm. for other things. Yeah. The curds, of course, get made into the cheese. Um, but super, yeah, innovative way to do cheddar. Because, I mean, the old world way, you know, the classic, uh-huh. you know, drum shape uh-huh. um, versus the brick shape. But you're right, for industrialization and uh-huh. how things modernize, you know, uh-huh. they just made a different way to make cheddar, different shapes of cheddar. And even even when you're adding bits into the cheese, there are so many different ways to do it. As Gina okay. said, for yeah. this one, you, you can tell by looking at it that mm-hmm. they press... Yeah. the the peppers into the curds you can tell by the marbling that yeah, that's how they did it sure. looks like a mosaic yeah mm-hmm. but they I mean they could have they could have rubbed it on the outside mm-hmm. they could have mm-hmm. they could have added them um, to, like to the milk at the beginning of the process before the curds formed and then yeah in fact isn't that what uh, Peter's doing with some of his curds is just letting yeah. the kind of the milk steep <laughs> yeah with flavors yeah Sometimes rosemary, say, uh, who knows? You know, people do use different they things. They could be, then it could be saffron, and then yeah. the cheese could just be the color of like a kind of a, a reddish or pinkish yeah. color. I mean, there's so many different weird yeah. things that they can do. Exactly, and weird can be good. Yeah, you know, it's fun to do the pure mm-hmm. cheese. Don't get me wrong, but it's also fun to kind of do the wild and wacky, weird. Yeah, mm-hmm. why not? I why say not? why not? For sure, for sure, real innovative. Always have to ask that question. Why not? Did you try Nate's great uh, dip yet? I, I mean, I've had it yeah. many times. So, like I said, I'm gonna do a, put it. the recipe online too. Um, what else is 
the creation in the cheese world that's super interesting. You oh, talked about me? well, you yeah, that's for you. Um, you're talking about the curd, you know, being cut really fine if it's a hard cheese, uh-huh. and that um, yeah. And it's not cut fine when it's a soft one. Mm-hmm. So when you think of the Red Hawk, if anybody had that left, I mean, the Red Hawk almost is one full mm-hmm. curd. They ne- don't even cut it and let it. The softer cheeses, think of it as just one big curd. That's just why there's so much liquid in it. That's what makes them soft. Whereas the harder cheeses, they've cut them so fine, all the liquid is gone and all you're left with is, mm-hmm. with is that solid. Yep. Um, so it's kind of interesting, again, innovation on how they do it. Um, it's yeah. Cheese making is all about how you treat the curd and it, and that really means how you manipulate the curd and how much whey you get rid of during the mm-hmm. process yeah and so if you have a bunch of little curds mm-hmm. the whey has been spilling out every time yeah every time you cut the curd so it might be the size of my fist you cut it in half then cut that piece in half until you're left leading. with little tiny bits like the, the size of my fingernail mm-hmm. and and those so you have a bunch of little curds you then take all those little curds, and if you want to make it even harder or um, have less moisture in the cheese, you can press those curds together and whey squeezes out yep. during that part of the process. That's crazy. And then, as the final step, you can throw it up in an aging room, and it will act, literally lose weight as it ages. Because mm-hmm. whey will, the angel share, like the, it, it will evaporate <laughs> over time, just, oh. like a, just like in yeah. a distillery. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it'll go from a hundred pounds to 90 pounds to 80 pounds yeah it'll get smaller and smaller and smaller and the cheese itself will uh shrink a little bit yeah and and the the texture will change it will become more um more dense more uh more intense Mm -hmm. and uh and so and and there's no right or wrong but uh, these are all things that that cheesemakers can do to to make different cheeses Mm -hmm. that's really creative yeah yeah trying to think what other creative you know ones are lurking about right now ones with um petals pressed on them oh yeah ferns mm-hmm. there's the one from um tobacco uh, leaves tobacco leaves well, what about the one that's hemp has hemp leaves oh the yeah the swiss one has hemp leaves uh, you had a great idea i mean even just when we were talking about mezcal uh-huh you said talk about soaking a cheese in a mezcal yeah wouldn't that be good and we haven't kind of seen smoking? that yet i feel a cheese like this corte fieno yeah. Because it wouldn't get so soggy with uh-huh. it, but it might just get that on the rind. I, I'm, okay, I'm gonna put a piece in. I'm gonna put a piece in a, some of that extra mezcal that I have tonight, <laughs> and we'll see you how it is. It? We'll, um, we'll, and then we'll tie that over, and I'll bust it out in the future and see how how well it uh, holds up. We have uh, we have cheesemakers who are who are right right now making or aging cheeses with local San Diego products. Yeah, it's we really had cool. a, a cheesemaker in Utah. Um, they they um, they were working with a distillery here. You and yours. You and yours. Yeah. And they send out a gin, I think. And they were they're aging one of their cheddars in a gin, like they've mm-hmm. soaked it in gin. Super cool. And then they've like cryovacted it, so yeah. it just so it stays all fresh and be. good. What in. about um? Doesn't even have to be always alcohol, like um the coffee. Yeah. Coffee grounds, uh, barely buzz. They're talking about that Utah. Same cheesemaker yeah. does one with coffee grounds and, and lavender. Yeah. And again, it just seems kind of weird and odd, but sometimes you want weird and odd. Yeah, you know? why yeah, not? Yeah, exactly. If it, if it works. For a different reason. And, it works. Uh, dessert or who knows. Think of, yeah. think of a reason to say yes and not no. Oh, that's also good. That'll be another episode. Always say yes. Mm-hmm. Always say yes. Yeah. Want to try that blue? Yes. Yes, <laughs> yes Try man. that stinky cheese? Yes. Be yes man. <laughs> like Jim Carrey. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, on that note, I don't, Rob, we've been babbling for an hour. Oh boy! Sorry, sorry everybody. Yeah, sorry everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much. What we have next, you guys? Okay, this is very fun. Why no Wednesday this week? We're it's all things sheepish. We're being sheepish this Wednesday. All sheep milk cheeses. You're gonna just see the crazy variety of flavors just amongst sheep milk, and then the wine itself is Italy Rob. Um, it's a grape that it's. We'll talk about it. Very unique to the this region, and it is called. The winery is Il Vero, but the wine is called Sheep. Ooh. So that's fine. Fun. All things Sheep. And then the next Sunday sessions... Can is we not... have a sheep here? Can we bring a sheep up yeah. here? Yeah. Okay. I'll talk. We'll work on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> that would be cool. Um, and then the next Sunday session, August 2nd. And that is going to be... What did we decide, Rob? I forgot. What it takes. What it takes. Just the theme, what it takes. And we'll leave it at that. Yeah. Thank you all. 
thank you everyone who's been here before new people um, appreciate it as always and we hope to see you soon um, happy cheese eating um, and happy um, drinking <laughs> have a great always. night <laughs> <laughs> all right see you next time bye, bye everybody ciao, ciao. Twenty-three. This.